Hello, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to talk about deep linking. What deep linking means is someone goes to a page that's not the main page of your site, maybe doing some investigation, looking at some things. You want to deliver them back to the page they were, they were at. And OAuth has a parameter called the state parameter, which is perfect for this. The state parameter is often used for CSRF protection, CSRF, but it can also be used for delivering data back to an application after an authentication has happened. So here we have an application and it contains various products. So, you know, we have a printer page, we have a chair page, and what we want to do is have someone who logs in from the chair page be delivered back to the chair page. So I set up a Fusion Health application. I made sure that a user was registered for the application and then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and demo this. So I am now at the Fusion Health login screen. As a reminder, you can theme this to look exactly like your application. And I log in. And I'm sent back to the chair page. How did this magic happen? Let's take another look. So if we go to the chair page, and we click login, and we look at the URL, I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste this entire URL so we can take a look at it in more depth. So let's look at each of these parameters in turn. First, we have our client ID, which corresponds to our Fusion Auth application ID. That's what we're logging into. We have our response type, which is part of the OAuth standard. This is saying that we're doing the authorization code grant. Then we have the redirect URI, and we'll examine the code at that endpoint in a second. We have our scope, which that's basically saying, hey, we want a refresh token, and then Below the state parameter, we have our code challenge, hash, and methods. That's part of Pixie. So the important parameter is the state parameter. So for the state parameter, we have a random string, and that is there to, again, provide the CSRF protection. But after that random string, we actually have this value. That's the delimiter and then a URL or at least a path component. And so that is something that is going to be preserved by Fusion Auth throughout the login process. Doesn't matter if you're going to use single sign on, if you're going against a LDAP connector, if you are going against a social login provider, we're going to preserve that. And then when we send back the authorization code to that redirect URI action, you're going to be able to parse that state parameter. Let's take a look at how that actually works. So here is the redirect URI. So again, this is getting the authorization code and its primary task is to take the authorization code and exchange it for a token, an access token. But it can do other things as well. And so what's relevant for us is that we are pulling the state from the server on line 61 and we are taking the value of the path we want to end up at on line 63. Remember they're separated by that dash. So 
So here's our state parameter even more exploded. Random value where we want the user to return. In the simplistic implementation, we just put that into uh, the state parameter. You could absolutely encode that in some way. You could encrypt it. Um, you could retrieve a value from a database, right? So you could just pass in a, you know, want to land back at page 103, and that way it wouldn't be as susceptible to URL tampering. Anyway, on line 63, we explode that apart, and then here we're doing the, the token exchange, which I'm not going to go into because it's not really that important. But on line 89, that's where after we successfully logged in, we are now forwarding the user back to where they started from. So that is really all that's required to support deep linking in FusionAuth. Remember, the state parameter is good for more things than just CSERF protection. You can use it for business logic and make sure your user ends up on the page that they authenticated from originally.